Hi, everybody. It's meteorologist Joe Chaffee on this uh, Saturday. We're, we're going to start off with the uh, Pacific Tropics. Very busy here. Uh, you've got, uh, you don't see a picture like this that often where you've got a, a bunch of tropical systems to, running around all at the same time. Here's uh, what's left of Fernanda, right up uh, well up to the north and west now. Um, here, uh, here's uh, 140 degrees west. And we have um, 20 degrees north right here. So it's already north of 20 degrees north and going goodbye. And here we have Tropical Storm Greg right here. And that is uh, not really been well organized. And um, I'm, I don't know how much uh, time it's going to have before it starts to encounter colder water. And it is actually encountering a little bit of shear with this upper load in the north. We have uh, a disturbed area of disturbed weather uh, to the west, to the uh, east of Greg. Uh, that's uh, just uh, along and just east, uh, just west of 110 degrees west. And then back at around 96 degrees west, we have a tropical depression that is just about on the verge of becoming a tropical storm. So, uh, just you know, the Pacific is active like this. It's been a very busy July. Uh, the Atlantic is usually on the quiet side. Here's a uh, another view. Uh, and you can see the uh, system. You can't see the one that's close to Mexico, the depression. But this is the disturbed weather that looks to become a depression. This is Tropical Storm Greg. This is a tropical depression from a couple of days ago that is now just a remnant low. And here we have uh, what's left of Fernanda uh, moving northwestward. And here's the whole Hawaiian Islands. So uh, other than some clouds that are getting thrown back westward. Uh, they are not going to have any issues from that. And uh, here's the uh, tropical Atlantic. You know, we've got a couple of tropical waves, but nothing that's going to develop into anything. Still a pretty hostile environment, although two things seem to be happening. First off is the fact that this upper low in the central Atlantic seems to be getting kicked away to the east. Uh, there's another upper low east of the Bahamas, so we'll have to see what that does over time. Here's the depression, by the way, in the Pacific, pretty well developed here. So I'm guessing this will be a tropical storm shortly. Um, the dry air that's been out in the tropical Atlantic appears to be shrinking, but we still have the bulk of the moisture from the uh, intertropical convergence zone south of 10 degrees north. Here's a wave that's moving across, and it's actually uh, going to skim. It's south of 10 degrees, and much of this convection is going to wind up probably going into South America and to Venezuela. So, you know, it, it, you still have everything too far south with regards to these tropical waves that are that are coming out. Here's a, a the water vapor loop on the Pacific side, and, and you can see the shear, can, she, the upper low here is probably crea is creating some shear over Greg on the, in the northeastern quadrant. Um, here's a system kind of blossoming uh, out to the east of Greg, and you can't see the tropical depression that's off the Mexican coast because that's too far to the east on this shot. By the way, look at this big upper low that's west of Hawaii. And here's another reason why Hawaii doesn't really get that many tropical storm threats because you, it just seems to be protected one way or the other. Either uh, you get these big Pacific storms to the north that uh, create strong wind shear conditions or the water temperatures, which at Hawaii are basically borderline for tropical storm development. So the, the, the water is not really supportive. And any one of a host of other, another 100 other things, including the fact that in the Pacific too, there's a large area of dry air that's evident uh, out in the uh, Pacific between where all the tropical storms are developing and the Hawaiian Islands. It's just you know very interesting to watch all this stuff play out. Okay, let's look at the weather situation for today because we do have a severe weather threat that's setting up uh, for the uh, northeast, uh, and uh, in particular from Long Island, northern New Jersey, eastern Pennsylvania, on southward uh, for uh, late late this after afternoon. And I think more than likely it may come a little later than that. It may come during the evening hours. Here's the radar this morning. I'm going to freshen this up. And we'll get a little zoom in on here for you. I've got some pretty good thunderstorms for the middle part of the morning going on. Uh, now moving into West Virginia and Western Pennsylvania. So here we are at 10 o'clock. Um, usually <clears throat> I have an old rule about storms when uh, precipitation when it's in 
in Pittsburgh, it takes about eight hours to get from Pittsburgh to New York City. So they're not there yet. And so that, that tells me that nothing's going to happen much beyond, uh, much before five or six o'clock in the evening in uh, this neck of the woods. So um, very busy indeed. Uh, it may be uh, later to, uh, later this evening and tonight. And by the way, here's the uh, Storm Prediction Center. I'm uh, using a slightly different map to show you the risk area today. But the marginal risk uh, running uh, from Long Island northwest through northern New Jersey, uh, through uh, most of uh, northeastern Pennsylvania. And then you have this large area of slight risk running from eastern Indiana, virtually the entire state of Ohio, West Virginia, uh, most of Pennsylvania, most all of central and south Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, into Virginia, down to about uh, just south of Richmond, over to about Norfolk. So, you know, it's a fairly large area of uh, severe weather that's uh, anticipated. Now, I'm going to show you the HRRR model to start off. And I got to tell you, these short range models have been nothing short of awful. Um, I think it probably has the timing right. Now, whether it has the structure of where the thunderstorms are going to be remains to be seen. But you know, this is at uh, 5 o'clock, <clears throat> uh, 6 o'clock this evening. Uh, no, 5 o'clock this evening. I'm sorry. And you can see that you know, there's a few cells here and there, but it, it's not overly impressive. And at 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, it kind of holds it off of the main area with this surface low that's developing and, and the upper air disturbance that goes with it that swings through after about 9, 10 o'clock. So it would argue for some heavier downpours late in the evening and uh, up through midnight, 1, 2 a.m. So particularly kind of flares them up during the overnight. I think that's probably the way it's going to work. So, you know, the severe weather threat is is more for the evening and the overnight. And frankly, I kind of like nighttime thunderstorms. They can be, they can be fun sometimes uh, in terms of the kind of... Uh, uh, lightning and thunder you get out of it, uh, and also in terms of the heavy rain uh, you can get out of it. I'm not saying I'm wishing here for severe weather, by all means, don't. That's not what I'm getting at. But um, you know, some sometimes the dynamics of the nighttime thunderstorms uh, visually um, can be um, you know, very interesting. Let me um, show you what kind of precip this gives. So it's kind of you can see it, it. It's it's typical of thunderstorm setups where it's going to be kind of streaky. And if you get into some of the heavier cells, you could wind up, you know, with a couple of inches of rain in, in a big hurry, while other areas may get very little. So this is, you know, usual, this is nothing unusual here. Now, I want to go to, um, I'm going to go to the GFS. And I'm going to widen out because there's two things going on, I think, that are really important here. Um, hold on. Sorry about that. The wrong region. I want to do this one and all right so so there's a couple of things that are going on here with respect to um, Sunday there's a bit of an onshore flow that is setting up you see where the waves of low pressure are uh, they're running across southern Ohio and then east of the New Jersey coast so this is going to keep things going to keep us in cloud cover on Sunday and I don't think there'll be much in the way of showers during the day, but there'll be maybe another round of uh, rain and thunderstorms Sunday night into Monday morning. So the day side Sunday looks okay. Then as that low pulls away, we're just going to have to wait for a cold front to come through. I think after today, uh, the 90 degree temperatures may be done. And the other thing is there's some decent relief coming in terms of the heat and humidity that we've experienced the last few days for Tuesday and Wednesday as a high builds up to the north. And you can see it here. So we're looking like, well, the weather could be um, nice and decent here for a couple of days. Now, that goes out, and the next cold front approaches on Thursday with some showers and storms. And then another high builds down um, to be followed by yet um, another. Actually, that, that, next, that front at the end of next week goes, gets down pretty far south and stalls out. So you wind up with waves developing on it and going out underneath us. Um, uh, this is going to be reflected now when I switch over to show you the upper air pattern and all this. Uh, and I noticed this yesterday. Uh, you know, we've been talking about the fact that at some point with this trough in the east scenario that we have, that 
as we start to get into August, if this pattern holds, um, we're going to see uh, you know, a little bit more in the way of robust cooler air masses coming down from the north. And indeed, you know, the last several runs want to amplify this troughing that's in the eastern part of the United States and amplify the ridge which means in the West, the heat wave will, will get a, a, an extra dose of juice uh, as we go into the end of July and beginning of August. I mean, look how, look how far south this trough extends down with westerlies almost in the northern Florida here. This is on Sunday, July 30th. You know, this has <clears throat> been ongoing, and I really don't see much change in this. It's trough after trough after trough uh, in, in, the, um, in the east. Uh, the ridge in the west is there. It either flattens out from time to time or flexes up. So depending uh, on um, where we are on the stage of how strong the ridge is in the west, uh, we could, uh, you know, wind up with with some uh, nice cool air masses coming down uh, every uh, three days or so uh, in the northeast. You can see it here. Your ridge is building up in the western part of the United States, and you know your trough is pretty far south. Now, with respect to the tropics, by the way, you know, use your Atlantic Ridge. It's it's not built that far up to the north, um, but uh, it does extend east-west. But any waves are going to wind up, you know, continuing more westward and south of 20 degrees north, in my view. There's not going to be a whole lot of a northerly component to them. The other thing that's going on that we should pay attention to, by the way, is up here uh, in the polar regions, we do have... Um, Higher than normal pressures. I think this is part. This is part of the reason why we're seeing a displacement of the jet um, so far to the south um, over uh, into the eastern part of the United States. So if you're looking for some, uh, you know, cool or cooler weather, or at least if you're looking for, um, you're not. You don't want it to be too hot. Um, this might be a pretty good pattern for you. It's because we're other than the odd. A uh, day or two here and there. Uh, overall, it would probably suggest that temperatures would be no worse than average going forward, and maybe in some cases on some days uh, below average. Uh, I'm thinking uh, Tuesday and Wednesday of this week in parts of the Northeast, we could see some places where temperatures have a tough time um, getting out of the uh, seven, uh, 70s, which would be really nice uh, in, in my view. I don't see the models aren't really producing anything in terms of tropical systems in the Atlantic side. So, um, you know, going into end of July, early August, it still remains pretty quiet. Although I think if this trough set up in the east strengthens, it may change the profile of the tropical Atlantic a little bit to make it a bit more active. So we'll have to pay attention to that. By the way, in the west, it's pretty much the same story, um, just the diurnal showers and thunderstorms. We keep getting these systems moving the way they are, they are, so that means the upper Midwest keeps getting hammered with uh, have, uh, severe weather and thunderstorms every three or four days as well. And looks like it could get a little wet in the southeast later next week and next weekend, given that the uh, next front is forecast to uh, move pretty far south into the southeast. It would be a pretty unusual to see it that far south this time of year, but look at, it, look at this nice high. This is on August 5th. This nice high comes down. You know, the air is nice and cool. If this is correct, it's going to be a nice shot of cool air to start off the month of August. And after that, who knows? We'll see where it goes. Okay, folks, uh, we've been live streaming this um, action this morning. And I uh, want to say a big hello to everybody who's here at this point. And thank you for joining me. I hope that you... Uh, are enjoying all these uh, weather videos of mine and on these live streams. Uh, if you're new, um, a big welcome to you, and uh, do please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, this way you get notified when these live streams come on, and of course, um, to subscribe to my YouTube channel doesn't cost you anything. And uh, check out, make sure to check out the latest weather website posts on meteorologistjoechaffee.com, and my friend Ben uh, uh, takes care of uh, Angry Ben, uh, as we call him, uh, does NY, New York City weather on nycweathernow.com, the Long Island angle on weatherlongisland.com. i got websites all over the place. And, uh, of course, you can download my app and subscribe to my forecast for New York City, Long Island, New Jersey, Hudson Valley, and eastern Pennsylvania, and Connecticut. And the app is free on uh, Google Play or iTunes, and uh, you can subscribe to my forecast for just a buck a month. 
So I'm eating actually cheaper than a cup of co coffee at four bucks. That's what I call Starbucks. All right, folks, have a great day, and we'll talk to you soon.